Welcome to worship with Mount Hope Lutheran Church in West Dallas. We're glad that you can join us this day. We're always blessed to be able to bring worship into your homes. Um, so welcome to anyone especially who is joining us for the first time in worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved. Amen. Amen. Holy One, we confess, we confess that, that we are, are not awake, awake for you. We are, we are not faithful in using your, your gifts. We, we forget the least of our siblings. We, we do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are affected by sin that, that divides your beloved community. community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. <laughs>
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And Lord also with, with you. you. Let us pray together. O God, o God of, justice of justice and love, and love you, you illumine our, our way, way through life, life with, with the words of your Son. Son. Give, Give us, us the light we need and, and awaken us to the needs of others through Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Savior and, and Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. Today, our special music video is called Trust in You by Lauren Daigle. Uh, the words are really appropriate for the times that we're in. This has been a really difficult week uh, for everyone. Um, if anything, our election has highlighted the differences that we have in our country and the need for us to come together. And as always, we need to remember that God is with us. Uh, some of the words in this song are, are especially appropriate. Uh, this line struck me, I've tried to win this war, I confess. My hands are weary, I need your rest. I know that we're all weary. We're weary of the politics. We're weary of COVID. We're weary of having to take all the precautions that we do. Um, but we need to trust in God. When we want God to move the mountains or part the waters, but he's not quite ready to do that yet, it can be very frustrating. Uh, but we need to know that God will take care of us in his own time. So let's watch Trust in You. Letting go of every single dream I lay each one down at your feet Every moment of my wandering Never changes what you see I've tried to win this war, I confess My hands are weary I need your rest Mighty warrior, king of the fight No matter what I face, you're by my side When you don't move the mountains I'm needing you to move When you don't part the waters I wish I could walk through when
The first reading is from the book of Amos. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, the gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. And the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The second reading is from 1 Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uniformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died or uninformed, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven and the dead in Christ will arise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. gospel according to Matthew the 25th chapter Jesus said to the disciples then the kingdom of heaven will be like this ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom five of them were foolish and five were wise when the foolish took their lamps they took no oil with them but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps as the bridegroom was delayed all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout. Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy, buy it, the groom, bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. The parable for today is a very familiar parable, and with its familiarity often comes simplicity. It is very easy and often very, uh, very often summed up in one of two ways. Don't be foolish, always be wise, a story of judgment, or be prepared, a story of caution or warning. Now there is some validity to both of those takeaways. So as we begin, let's start at the end. 
Jesus says, keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. In other words, be prepared. This is not the only time we hear Jesus say such a thing in Matthew. In talking about the coming of the Son of Man, he mentions two men in the field, two women grinding meal, and in both cases, one will be taken and one will be left. Followed by, keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. He tells of a house owner who, if he had known the thief was coming, would have stayed awake. Jesus will, as he goes to pray in the garden before his crucifixion, ask his disciples to stay awake. It's interesting that all the bridesmaids, both wise and foolish, and likely others gathered to meet the bridegroom, fall asleep. So then, keep awake in this situation isn't so much about nodding off, but about being prepared. Here is where the judgment part comes in. Five of the bridesmaids were wise because they brought extra oil for their lamps, which comes in handy when the bridegroom is delayed. The other five bridesmaids, however, did not bring more oil and were judged to be foolish or were caught in a bind. Their lack of preparation is judged as foolish. So if you don't want to be judged as foolish, be prepared. As I said earlier, there is validity in that message. After, but after reading some commentaries on this passage and listening to a couple podcast discussions about it this last week, I would like to take a little bit different look at it. Well, we can start maybe by taking another look at judgment. Even when the five bridesmaids who brought oil, extra oil discover that the other five didn't, they don't judge them. They just suggest that they go to the dealer and buy more. The five who didn't bring extra oil could have judged the ones who had as selfish for not sharing any of theirs. They could have called names at each other. We don't, however, hear any of that. In fact, no judging is done except by the bridegroom himself who chooses not to let the foolish ones in when they return. So, if it's not so much about judgment, then what? Well, I think that one of the elements of this parable is fear. The bridesmaids don't judge each other, but both act out of a sense of fear. Fear that there wasn't enough. The foolish fear because they don't have any extra oil. The wise fear because they don't think they, that they have enough to share, that they would run out if they gave some to the others. Fear prompts the wise to suggest that the foolish go looking for oil. Fear prompts the foolish to do just that, and they miss the bridegroom's arrival. Because they left in fear of what they didn't have, they missed out on the entire wedding banquet. So, what would have been wrong if they didn't have enough oil to keep their lamps lit? Wouldn't there have been enough light from other lamps to still be a part of the the waiting and the bridal procession? Couldn't they have been okay waiting in the darkness for a, for a while rather than risk missing the bridegroom's arrival altogether by leaving to attend to their lack? Don't we give in to fear that we do not have enough? Well, it doesn't seem like the bridesmaids, wise or foolish, judge one another. I'm wondering if that holds true for us. Or does our fear of not having enough lead to our judgment of others? How often do we judge others because we fear that they are a threat to the status quo? How often do we judge others negatively because they are a threat to what we have, whether it's material goods or money or food or control or authority or power? We fear we won't be left with enough. Frequently, the oil in this parable is equated to good works of faith, good works or, or re equated to faith. Or, as one of the commentators I heard in a podcast this week suggested, the oil was the level of connection to the bridegroom, who in this parable is likely referring back to Jesus. So then the fear of having enough becomes a spiritual matter. Do we have enough faith? Do we have, enough, have we done enough service? Do we have enough blessing? 
Do we have enough of a connection with Jesus for him to know us? In his commentary on Working Preacher, Dirk Lang notes, the young women were all waiting for the bridegroom. They all belonged to the same community, the same group of friends. They all fell asleep waiting for the bridegroom to come. Within the community is it impossible to tell who has enough oil for their lamps, who has been more faithful. This is not for us to see or to judge. The church remains always a mixed community. It is only Jesus who will judge us in the end. In the parable, the bridegroom at the bridesmaid's calling of Lord, Lord, open to us, responds that he does not know them. There seems to be no recognition of them, no connection with them. And so they are left outside the banquet, oil or no oil, in the dark. It is impossible for us to know who has enough oil in their lamp. Can we be okay sitting in the darkness, in the not knowing for a while, being patient and trusting, rather than leaving and risk not meeting the bridegroom, ultimately not being let in? If we think about all the events of this last year, the darkness of this last year, how could we or would we have truly prepared for all that has taken place? We might recall the early weeks of the pandemic when people were storming the stores in fear, not to just simply stock up a little, but often to hoard water, food, cleaning supplies, and let's not forget, toilet paper. Yet all of that, all of that did not prepare us for the length of this pandemic and its effects, nor did it prepare us for the demonstrations and riots in response to shootings of our sisters and brothers of color. It did not prepare us for the animosity, the confusion, the suspicion surrounding the elections. We remain in the dark in so many ways during this time, physically, emotionally, spiritually, perhaps even wondering where or if we will find oil for our lamps as we wait, longing for the bridegroom's appearance, Christ's appearance among us. How will we prepare for the days ahead if we feel that our oil is nearly spent by all the things that we have already faced? Will we give in to the fear that we don't have enough and allow our feelings and attitudes to throw fuel on the fire of judgment and animosity that is raging around us in the world? Will we try to ignore the darkness and expect that it will just all magically go away? Will we leave the scene seeking oil, seeking satisfaction and security in other places at risk of missing the bridegroom? Or can we endure the darkness together as we wait? We all have some oil, some bit of Jesus' light that shines in us and through us. In our baptism, we are assured that we have been sealed with the promised Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Nothing can take that away. Nothing can change that. We also hear the charge, let your light so shine before others so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That is the promise. The promise of oil for our lamps, even when we seem depleted. Can we find ways to share some of that oil with one another and with the world so that the light, Christ's light, shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it? And the darkness does not overcome us? Will we find ways to deepen our relationship with Christ so that he knows us when we call, Lord, Lord, open to us in times of need? Are we willing to trust Jesus, the bridegroom, to appear among us as grim as situations may seem? Are we willing to hang in there for the long haul, to persist in being beacons of light and agents of change for the good of all in these days, the weeks, the months, perhaps even years ahead? Are we willing to live into patience are we willing to live into 
resilience? Can we fight back the fear that exists within us and among us and instead bring fuel to the places and spaces of hope in the world? Can we leave judgment behind and seek justice instead? Will we keep awake, be prepared for what we'll be called to do as Christians in and for the world that God loves? I know I'm leaving you with more questions than answers today, which is somewhat the way of the world these days. May we all trust that the one who knows us intimately, our Lord Jesus Christ, will, in time, open the doors of understanding, of knowledge, of wisdom and faith and hope to us that we might discover those answers. Amen. Let us profess our faith together. I believe in, in God, God, the Father, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to lead the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Holy God, rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship. Enliven our worship with sincere and heartfelt song. Help us to feel your presence as we pray. Give us a sense of community, even though we worship apart in our own homes. Hear us, O oh God. 
Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Holy Uniter, bring us all together after this contentious election season. Give us patience and open our hearts to listen to each other. Lead us as Christians to be healers, advocates for justice, and messengers of hope among all of your people. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Holy healer, bring relief to all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Stir us to take actions that will help to curb the effects of COVID-19. Heal those who are sick, comfort the dying, and wrap your loving arms around those who do not have the opportunity to say goodbye to their loved ones. Hear us, O God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends and those who feel alone during this time of pandemic. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Holy Protector, be with all observing Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Holy and immortal one, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives and inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And, and also, also with you. We again take this time to thank you for the number of ways which you support ministry here at Mount Hope. Even though our building um, is not open for worship, there are still um, many, many things going on here uh, that, that need, those, need that support. Um, one of them being, of course, the Hope Ministries. Um, you can donate by uh, giving online or by signing up for electronic giving, or simply by mailing in your offerings. And we are very, very appreciative of that. Do you have anything today, Donna? I do. Um, we are having a really busy time of year. We're entering, of course, getting close to the time of the holidays, and that means that the Hope Ministries will be doing a lot of things. We will be distributing Thanksgiving food boxes this year. Um, and so we have put together, or we will be putting together boxes with a meal for a family of four, includes a turkey and all the fixings. Of course, some of our families are larger, so they'll get two or three boxes, depending on how many people they have in their home. Um, so we're offering the opportunity to sponsor a Thanksgiving box. And we figured the cost is about $40. We get some of the things donated or for very low cost. So it's actually a really reasonable price for all of that. Um, and you can do that by going online, going to mounthopelutheranchurch.org, and going to the Donate button, um, and just donate to the Hope Ministries your $40. Or you can send in a check um, made out to Mount Hope Lutheran Church, um, Hope Ministries. So we'd appreciate any support that we can get for that. Uh, thinking ahead for Christmas, we also will be doing Christmas toys again this year. It's going to be a little tricky because we can't have families in to pick out the toys all at once like we have in the past, but we are going to figure it out. So you may want to start watching the sales for Christmas toys. We'll be announcing a drop-off day in the parking lot, the church parking lot, on a Saturday uh, where you can bring your donations by. Um, and of course, you can always contact me to um, find a time to donate if you don't, if that doesn't work for you. And finally, we will be doing an online fundraiser since we were not able to do our fall fundraiser for the Hope Ministries this year. And so we will be having a steadfast band concert that will be broadcast online. It will be taped so that you can watch it anytime after it's first um, 
put online, and there'll be opportunities to donate to the Hope Ministries there, and that will take the place of our fall fundraiser. So we know there's a lot coming up. Uh, you may need to pick and choose what you'd like to donate to, but any support uh, would be greatly appreciated. We're finding that many of our families are experiencing great, great difficult uh, because of COVID, of difficulty because of COVID, losing jobs. Of course, many of you are in those same situations. And um, the difference is these people don't have a permanent address. So they're relying on other people to keep them off the streets. And so we want to do the best that we can to continue to feed them and clothe them. Thank you for your support. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God. Rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign Savior and Spirit, be with you today and always. Amen. Amen. Amen.
just a couple of quick announcements. I'd like to thank everyone who took part in the town hall meeting that was held virtually this uh, last week with the bishop and with Reverend uh, Jennifer Arnold as they led us through, again, the MSP for its approval. And so that is now in the hands of the governance board for its final little leaps and edits and crossing all the dies and I's and or dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's. So we thank you for that. We also thank you uh, for those who have been called to serve on the call committee. They were installed as a part of that meeting. A reminder as well that on November 14th, Saturday afternoon, between three and four, we will be doing drive-through communion. So please join us for that. Um, you should have all the details about what that is about in the letter that was sent to you a couple months ago. Um, so please join us for that. And we will also be celebrating that as a part of our online service. So you might want to have bread um, and wine or juice ready at home as well as you celebrate that worship service. And also, don't forget to join us for Zoom coffee hour on Sunday mornings at 1030 and Zoom Bible study on Thursdays at 1. Anything else? I just wanted to let everybody know what the call committee's direction will be right now. Uh, we are going to start meeting every single week until we can get through um, the majority of our work. And the first task is to come up with questions for our candidates. Um, and so we'll be working on that prayerfully and looking through using our document that was approved last week to prepare those questions so that we can focus on our strengths and our weaknesses and our priorities. So look forward to many more updates to come. Mm -hmm. Right. Beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Have a good week, everyone. Stay safe. Bye.